So let's look at this one for a little bit. So what I want you to do is get out your highlighters. And we're going to try to follow the carbons as much as possible through the TCI cycle. So we've got pyruvate right here. So we've got three carbons for this pyruvate. And one of our carbons comes off as carbon dioxide. So which carbon from pyruvate is actually coming off? Left, middle, right. Right. So this one, right here, that is this carbon. So you can like highlight that last carbon in green and then do this carbon in green. So remember that's our pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. That's that big complex we talked about in the last lecture. So now we're left with the two carbon unit. And so we know that we're going to require coenzyme A for that, and we're going to become our um, acetyl-CoA compound. So we can do this a couple different ways. So maybe mark, like mark this carbon, these two carbons, kind of as a group, and we'll see where they go. So I've got this two carbon unit and on this screen it's kind of like a pink color. And it's going to join with this four carbon oxaloacetate molecule. So where is the new bond? When we join our four and our two to become the six citrate. The hydrogen is taken off up top. And so this hydrogen is now going to be gone. And you're going to have a new bond right here between this carbon, which is kind of like carbon number two, and this carbon that has the alcohol on it. So these two carbons right here were these two carbons in pyruvate. So we make this molecule called citrate. Some people call it tricarboxylic acid. So there was a big, huge controversy over this, whether this really did have three carboxylic acids in it. And so they ended up realizing that it was the same compound. So they, some people call it tricarboxylic acid. So, so this TCA, this citrate molecule at physiological pH is deprotonated. It has an overall negative three charge to it. Then it's going to become um, isocitrate, and so where is our two carbon blue carbons now? They should still be at the top. So when we look at this step number three is our first decarboxylation reaction. So where is that carbon coming from? It's one of the carboxylates. You're asking which carbon came off. It's one of so the here, bottom. so this carbon, where was this one? Yep, right there. So this carbon, this carboxylate right here is the one that comes off as CO2.
So when we continue down to alpha ketoglutarate, our two carbons are still there. And then when we, oops, that's supposed to be blue. And then when we decarboxylate again, where does that one come from? Yeah, so the last carbon down here. So this carbon becomes that carbon of carbon dioxide. And then we generate that molecule called um, succinyl-CoA. <coughs> so now we're a four carbon component, and we're gonna stay four for a little while. So we're gonna go succinyl-CoA, then we're gonna go to succinate, we're gonna get rid of the, the um, coenzyme A off of it, but our Two carbon original acetate unit, still there. Still there. We're going to play around with the double bonds. I'm going to add some double bonds in here. But so now, when we go from our um, succinate to our fumarate, now we're going to make, now the last, the carbon that used to have just the CH2 now becomes part of a double bond. And then we'll follow our fumarate to malate. And then our malate to oxaloacetate. So, so now it's a carboxylate and a ketone that was originally that acetate unit up above. So let's go around again. Because if I make this a different color and I say this red one is the one that was the first time around. So now, where is this one over here? The middle one. Right, now it's the middle one, right. Now it's this one right here, and that one right there, yeah, like that. So now this one is actually the red one that comes through. Okay, let's turn this one red. So the second time around is where we do the real decarboxylation from that acetate unit. But only one of them. That other one? Sits right there, stays there the whole time. Doesn't go away. Keeps going around and around and around and doesn't get doesn't get taken off. So the resulting uh, decarboxylation reaction, if you were trying to trying to like put a C13 label on it and watch it go around, the first time around you're not going to see anything. The first one cycle through your uh, your C13 labeled molecule will stay on your oxaloacetate. But not until the second time around will you get to see one of the C13s come off. Pretty cool. So I do like this one also because it has the, the structure for all the components, it has the enzymes, and it has all of the coenzymes with it. So this is probably my favorite of all of them. And later on towards the end, we'll, we'll go through it and do the, each of the cycles, but this is a nice overview of what it's going to look like.